pleasant day 11 ABM C84, our fellow classmates, and most importantly, to our PN Health subject instructor Ms. Janeline Sabando. Today, we, Group 1, will present to you our innovative Philippine game or laro ng lahi entitled Bandilaban or translated as Fight for Your Flag. But before everything else, I would like to introduce myself. Good day! My name is Russell De Valenzuela, the representative of Group Number 1, and together with my group mates, I'm Natalie Biabron, Jane Antonia, Amanda Tapia, and Jean Molina will be your presenters for today. In our presentation for today, we will discuss about the overview, rules, players' objectives, game equipments, vision of the game, mechanics, and connection of the generated game to our Philippine culture. Jean Molina will be presenting the game overview, I myself will be discussing the rules of the game, Amanda Tapia will explain the player's objectives, game equipments, and vision of the game, then, Jane Pancha will be demonstrating the mechanics of the game, and lastly, Natalia Brown will talk about the connection of the game to the Philippine culture. So for the next speaker to present the game overview, here is Jean Molina. The floor is yours. Good day, I'm Jean Claudette Molina, and I'm here to present the overview of the game. So before we go into the details of the game, let us first define Bandilaban or Fight for Your Flag. Bandilaban, also known as Fight for Your Flag, is a simple game in which players compete for the flag to win the game. This game requires two teams with equal number of members. In this game, you will need a flag, ball, and a chalk, charcoal, masking tape, or even just a stick to draw lines on the ground that will indicate the basis of two teams and the flag area where the flag should be placed. This game represents team cooperation, so it's a must for every team to be able to strategize, collaborate, and communicate properly in securing the team's victory. As previously said, the only materials needed for you to successfully play this game are very convenient. Anything that can draw lines on the ground that can clearly state the basis of each team will do. This game represents Bayanihan or the unity of all Filipinos. It is also a representation of countrymen who ferociously defend for our nation's liberty and property. Once again, I'm Jean Molina and now let's proceed to the rules of the game presented by Mr. Ross of Valenzuela. Rules of the games First, safety of the players is at utmost importance. Play safe and fair. Then, players must strictly follow the mechanics, rules, and safety precautions implemented in the game. Then, violating the game's instructions, rules, and regulations will cause disqualification to the contravening team. Be fair at all times. Misconduct and any forms of cheating will not be tolerated in the game. Fifth, any types of maltreatment towards foes that will cause harm and injuries are unacceptable. Thus, the causing team will receive appropriate sanctions. The game will be terminated if any of the players get severely harmed or injured. Lastly, practice sportsmanship at all times. Again, I am Russell Dave G. Valenzuela and that's the rules of Bandilaban or Fight for a Flag game. Then, presenting the player's objectives, Games Equipments, and Vision of the Game, here is Amanda Claire I. Tapia. Hi, I'm Amanda Tapia and I will present the Player's Objective, Game Equipments, and Vision of the Game. The Player's Objectives The Lupon ng mga bayani must protect their flag at all times. They must fight for their flag until it was successfully placed in the flag area without being captured by the pangkat ng mga mananakop. The pangkat ng mga mananakop must seize for the flag of the lupon ng mga bayani to win the game. Game Equipments While playing field or any spacious place where you can play the game safely. Chalk, charcoal, masking tape, stick, or any material that can be used to mark your playing area with the appropriate bases and flag area. Flag of any kind as long as it will not exceed the size of your body. 
the use of the official Philippine flag is prohibited. Lastly, balls. The number of balls will depend on the number of players. The vision of the game. To cultivate patriotism among children towards the preservation of Filipino culture and tradition. To calculate to the youth the value of our hero sacrifices and bravery towards the liberation of our country. To encourage children in our generation to cherish the wrong lahi as well to strengthen and intensify Philippine culture and today's technologically driven society. To instill to the youth the importance of standing up for their own rights. To encourage young Filipinos in physical activities and sports in their early ages. To enhance and boost one speed, coordination, balance, agility, strategic planning, communication, and team collaboration among Filipino children. We all know that today's generation is almost entirely reliant on technology to entertain themselves. Therefore, the game Fight for Your Flag or Bandilaban will aid in demonstrating our hero sacrifices in liberation of the Philippines as well as, as, well as in gaining appreciation from today's youth. Laro ng Lahi contributes in the retention and strengthening of the Filipino children, culture, tradition at the time. And unlike internet games, the game Fight for Your Flag promotes enhancement of physical strength, speed, coordination, balance, and flexibility of the youth. Once again, I'm Amanda Tapia and the next is the mechanics of the game that present by Jane Pancha. A pleasant day everyone! I am Jane Pancha and I will be the one who will demonstrate the mechanics of our game. But before I start, I want to let you know precisely the role of mechanics in a game. Game mechanics are structures of rules and feedback loops intended to promote entertaining gameplay. They are the building pieces that may be applied and combined to gamify any non-game situation. Mechanics are the most apparent gamification component and tend to be the primary focus of most gamification efforts. Now, let us move on to the mechanics of our game Bandilaban or Fight for Your Flag. First, two teams with equal numbers of players can play this game. Second, the game begins with the toss coin. Whoever wins the toss coin will be the lupon ng mga bayani and the losing team will be the pangkat ng mga mananako. Third, the main goal of the game is to protect the flag of the lupon ng mga bayani from the pangkat ng mga mananako. This game will have two rival groups. Before starting the game, they must first begin by tossing or flipping the coin to determine their role. For those who don't know, toss the coin, coin flipping, coin tossing, or head or tail is the process of throwing a coin in the air and verifying which side is showing when it lands. Choosing between two possibilities, head or tails, and it's commonly used to resolve disputes between two parties. As mentioned in player's objective, the main goal in this game is to keep the heroes or lupon ng mga bayani safe and protect their flock against the group of invaders o pangkat ng mga mananako. Fourth, before the game officially starts, both of the teams will have their time to plan and strategize. The lupon ng mga bayani will choose one member on their group to hold the flag which will be their bandelado or flag bearer. Well, the pangkat ng mga mananakop will choose a hitter and a capturer on their team. For every three member of the team, there must be one hitter on the pangkat ng mga mananakop. For example, six members group will have two hitters and the remaining four members will be the capturer. If the group is not an exact multifalls of three, consider rounding up. Thus, in a group of 4 and 5, there must be 2 heaters, 3 heaters in a group of 7 and 8, and so on. Fifth, the two teams will say handana if they have already chosen a specific role for each of the members. Then, the official game will start. Sixth, both of the teams will stand on their respective positions and bases. The lupon ng mga bayani must face backwards the pangkat ng mga mananakop. In that way, the banderado's flag will not be seen by the opposing team if he or she will place it in front of his or her body. 
As you can see here in the picture, that is the actual formation, respective positions, and bases of the player in this game. The group wearing a military uniform is the pangkat ng mga mananakop. The two players on the side holding the ball are designated to be the group hitters, and the three in the middle are the watcher or capturer of their group. Next, the group who is wearing traditional clothes is the lupon ng mga bayani. The group is facing backward because in that way, the banderados flag will not be seen by the opposing team if he or she will place it in, in front of his or her body. The group designated the woman in the middle who is holding the flag as the banderado or flag bearer. The two groups need to shout handana once they have decided who exactly will play for the specific roles. And that's where the game starts. If you notice, our Philippine flags inspires the play playing field because this game is connected to the history of the Philippines. It symbolizes patriotism, love of country, and a sense of nationhood and embodies the aspiration and sentiments of the Filipino people in their unceasing quest of independence. 7. Next. The pangkat of the mga mananakop will guess on who is the banderado among the other team. The hitter of the pangkat ng mga mananakop will throw a ball on the person they think is the banderado. The lupo ng mga bayani can predictably move in their position to try dodging the ball to be thrown on them. However, it will be risky for them to dodge the ball as it may enable the opposing team to see who has the flag among their group. 8. Once the ball hit a member on the lupo ng mga bayani, the person will raise his or her both hands to see if she or he holds the flag. If the pangkat ng mga mananakop successfully hit the banderado, they immediately win the game. 9. The hitters can only throw a ball once. If they fail to hit a banderado, they will stay on their position on the rest of the game. 10. If all of the hitters fail to hit the banderado, the lupo ng mga bayani must run and place the flag on the flag area, the designated area where the flag should be placed, to win the game. When the game starts, the conqueror must find out who is holding the flag in the lupo ng mga bayani. You can compare this part of this game to one of our Filipino game called Batong Bata, but with a twist. The hitters of the occupying team will show the ball to whomever they think is holding the flag. But the hitters of the occupying team can only throw once. On the other side, the lupon ng mga bayani must avoid and protect the flag holder. And since they turn their backs at the enemy, their movements will be more careful and predictable just so that they will not hit by the hitter and to keep safe the real holder of the flag. If all the hitters of the group fail to hit the flag holder, the team of Lupon ng mga bayani should run to the designated area where they should place the flag they protected to win the game. 11. The banderado can pass the flag to the other team of his or her team as long as they are able to protect the flag from the captures. It will all depend on how the Lupon ng mga bayani will strategize in fighting for their flag and be able to bring it to the flag area to win the game. 12. On the other hand, after unsuccessfully hitting the banderado of the opposing team, the remaining members of the pangkat ng mga mananakop or their so-called captures will run after the banderado and try to steal the flag. If the captures triumphantly steal the flag from the other team and be able to bring it to their base, the pangkat ng mga mananakop will win this game. While running in the designated area where the flag should be placed, the po ng mga bayani can pass the flag to each other so that the capturer of the pangkat ng mga mananakop do not get the flag they are fighting for. The po ng mga bayani will succeed if they can protect the flag until they reach the flag area. But if the pangkat of mananakop can take and snatch the flag and bring it to their base, they are the winner. Lastly, the winning team of the game will either command of the losing team anything they want or they will make the losing team run from their base to the flag area 10 times so that they will be tired and the winning team will have an upper hand to the next set of games. And that's all for the mechanics of the game. Once again, I am Jean Pancha. 
Now, let's move forward to the connection of the game of the Filipino cultured blood by Natalie Ebron. So, good afternoon everyone. I'm Natalie Ebron and since we already discussed the game's overview, rules, objectives, equipment, vision, and mechanics, let's move on now to the connection of the game to the Filipino culture. So, first of all, we make sure that the entire game relates to our Filipino culture since it is also our way of showing respect, admiration, and love to our country as a whole. So, here are some of the Filipino cultural elements that you may discover throughout the game. So, first, the game Bandilavan serve as a manifestation of nationalism in a way patriotism towards our country, culture, and tradition. So, in this statement, we can say that the game Bandilavan serve as a manifestation and awakens patriotism towards our country, culture, and tradition because we all know that patriotism or national pride is the feeling of love, devotion, and sense of attachment to one's homeland. And it is demonstrated in the game when the players of Lopon na Mabayani defend their flag or country against the opposing team or what we call colonizer o pangkat ng mga mananakop. Second, it demonstrates bayanihan, culture of Filipino through enjoyable and collaborative leisure physical activities. So, we all know that the bayanihan spirit is still present in the Philippines. It is one of many beautiful things that Filipino own and can be proud of, just like in the game Fight for the Flag where the Banderado and Catupineros of way of giving each other a flag and working together to save it from the other group or pangkat ng mga mananakop demonstrate Filipino concept of what we call Bayanihan. It is the act of assisting one another, particularly in time of need, without expecting any in return or rewards to achieve a certain goal. Third, this game reminds us of our history where foreign invaders tries to colonize our nation. As Filipino, we are all aware that our country is one of the most westernized nations in Southeast Asia, with a unique blend of Eastern and Western culture as a result of invaders such as Spain and United States who colonized the country and were the most significant influences on Philippine culture. So in this game, we will also remember how foreign invaders attempted and made a way to colonize our beloved country, the Philippines. Because in one of the segments of the game Bandilaban, the pangkat ng mga mananakop will have a chance to target and fight down those lupon ng mga bayani, particularly the banderado or the one who protects the flag that represent our country by striking the ball. However, if the hitter failed to beat, the capturers will have one more chance to steal the flag from Banderado, who is aiming to place their flag in the final round. Fourth, the game Fight for the Flag is a resemblance of our countrymen and Filipino heroes forcefully protect our compatriots and fight for our rights and homeland against the colonizer. So, as previously stated, there are numerous ways of invaders or pangkat ng mga mananakop to colonize the other team in the game Bandilavan, also known as Fight for the Flag. Despite their numerous ways for snatching the flag, the lupon ng mga bayani employ a variety of strategies to protect their flag during the game. They might adapt a tactic to mislead the conqueror about their involvement in the game. Furthermore, they can find a way to escape the flag like our Filipino heroes who have done in the past in order to recover our homeland. In this manner, we already resemblance our countrymen and Filipino heroes who battle for our countries against colonizer. Lastly, the game promotes and preserves our Philippine games or mostly known as Laron and Lahi as a part of Filipino youth culture and tradition. We may argue that the game Bandilaban, also known as Fight for the Flag, support and preserve Philippine games or laro ng lahi as a part of Filipino youth culture and tradition since like traditional Filipino games, it is an indigenous games in the Philippines that children may frequently play. One of the major goals of this game is to teach traditional Filipino games to the children. Furthermore, it is frequently invented without the need for anything other than the players themselves. 
because the intensity of the game develops only from their ability to think and act. So, that's all for today. Once again, I'm Nata Lebron presenting the connection of the game Bandilaban or also known as Fight for the Plug to the Filipino Culture. And that's all for our Bandilaban or Fight for Your Flag game presentation for today. I hope that you've gained an understanding about the purpose and contribution of our game towards the promotion and preservation of our traditional Philippine games in today's technologically driven society. Once again, my name is Russell Div G. Valenzuela, together with my compatriots. I'm Natalie Biabron, Jane Antonio, Amanda Tapia, and Jean Molina. Your group one presenter for today. Goodbye and have a good day.